good day to you all um, i am miss loda francia assistant professor department of english bishop eba college and in this video we are going to see a short analysis of wb aids the second coming uh, let's see first of all about something about uh, the author he is an irish poet one of the foremost figures of the 20th century literature and uh, he was a pillar of both the irish and british literary establishment and he helped to found the abbey theater and in his later years he served as an irish senator for two years and um, for two terms uh, aids was a driving force behind the irish literary uh, revival along with lady gregory uh, edwin martin sorry edward martin and uh, george moore and in his early poems like uh, island of Stat uh, statues Uh, they were inspired by the lyrical style of Edmund Spenser, Shelley, and the poets of the pre-Raphaelite brotherhood. He was an award. He was awarded the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1923, and in the year 1890, 1890, he joined the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, and uh, with the Ernest uh, Reyes, he co-founded the Rhymers Club. and he got his uh, nobel prize for literature in 1923 and these rhymers club they are uh, uh, they are group of london based poets and they met regularly in the uh, fleet street tavern to recite their verse uh, aids had a lifelong interest in mysticism spiritualism occultism and astrology and this is about the poet Uh, W.B. Yeats, well-known poet, a very uh, well-known uh, figure of 20th century British literature. And coming to the poem, let's see something about the poem first. Uh, Second Coming. It is one of the uh, most famous and most anthologized poem uh, poems of W.B. Yeats, and it was written in the aftermath of uh, World War One, and it was first entitled as the Second Birth. Okay, that was the first title that was given to him, uh, given to it. and later it was renamed re entitled and it was first printed in the dial in 1920 and later it was included in his 1921 collection of poems uh, titled michael robertus and the dancer the influence of blake, uh, blake and shelley are more apparent in these poems um, in this collection and uh, it's uh, it's it's one of uh, its mature poems and it is they are very rich in uh, imagery the poems in this collection and the title of this volume of poetry michael robertus and the dancer it derives from the title of title poem of this collection okay uh, the same title okay michael robertus and the dancer this poem the second coming is a dirge for the decline of european civilization and before going to the text let's see some more uh, information about this poem um, robert b parker he wrote a novel in 1983 um, and he has derived uh, taken his title from this poem the second coming the title of this uh, no, his novel is the widening jaya and uh, wb yeats he has borrowed the uh, phrase things fall apart from chinwa hb from his title of his novel okay that is um, uh, something extra about uh, this poem and let's go into the poem the second coming uh, this second coming the very title is a, a kind of alarming one it is an allusion to the reappearance of christ that is prophesied in the book of revelation in bible okay that's the last book that we see in the bible where um, john uh, he talks about his vision uh, the vision that he has seen and he talks about the second coming of christ how he is coming coming to judge the world once again as a kind of king and uh, yeats uses this christian imagery of second coming and also the end of the world apocalypse allegorically to describe the atmosphere of post war europe and uh, the second coming in this poem that refers to it is it doesn't refers to the second coming of jesus but it refers to a new messiah 
may be a rough beast which is going to uh, uh, going to be born in Bethlehem okay which is going to rule the world okay maybe a new kind of civilization that is going to uh, be born okay after this end of the previous civilization and the very first line um, let's go into the poem turning and turning in the widening jaya the falcon cannot hear the falconer things fall apart the center cannot hold mia anarchy is loosed upon the world the blood dim tide is loosed and everywhere the ceremony of innocence is drowned the best lack all conviction while the worst are full of passionate intensity this is the first part of the poem and turning and turning okay the the falcon is turning okay the flying falcon is falcon is uh, flying away from its master and uh, the very first line um, denotes okay everything is everything uh, that is evil is going to showing itself everything is getting apart from everything else and he also talks about a concept called a widening jaya jaya is a kind of concept that he talks about in his uh, prose work a vision um, and he explains um, his uh, own philosophy of cyclic view of history by the image of this uh, uh, jaya widening jaya and according to this uh, uh, diagram okay that you see in the screen okay uh, a diagram of uh, conical sp uh, spirals one inside the other and it calls these spirals as jayas and these uh, jaya what do we mean by jaya jaya is a spiral that expands outward as it goes up and he uses this image to describe the notion of uh, the motion of history uh, towards chaos and instability and it's believed that each civilization continues for 2000 years and after which it dis disintegrates uh, completely and it gives place to a completely new civilization so he believes that the previous civilization is going to come to an end and uh, the rough beast which is going to be slouching towards bethlehem to be born it is a kind of new civilization and it is, it is going to be full of anarchy and bloodshed that is what he prophesizes in this poem and poet is greatly disturbed by the contemporary uprising and rebellion and execution uh, not only in ireland but also um in elsewhere in the europe okay even in ireland you have this easter rising of 1916 okay and, and we have fascism and we have russian revolution that happened in 1917 all these things disturb the uh, mind of the poet and he has all these things in his mind when he talks about the mia mia anarchy is loosed upon the world the best lack all conviction and the worst are full of passionate intersect there is only bloodshed anarchy everywhere uh, uh, when the new civilization is going to be born okay there is no control the things cannot um, uh, uh, held okay things cannot okay things fall apart the central cannot hold the center has lost all its power and it has uh, lost okay its control so things around the margin okay in, in the uh, periphery it is uh, disintegrating and due to this jaya the circumference of the civilization will disintegrate and and the, and this process of dis disintegration will go centripetally centripetally means going away from the center center fleeing um, to the point at the center and when the process of disintegration is complete a new completely new civilization will be born okay that is what he talks about in this poem okay how okay this previous civilization is going to come to an end and the first part of the poem uh, talks about um, he describes the condition that is present in the world how the present world is okay and then the next stanza he talks about what 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 is going to happen when this minya mere anarchy is let loose in the world okay what what will happen or how will the new civilization will be born okay all these things are discussed in the second part it summer summarizes uh, that from those previous conditions okay the present conditions of the world a monster second coming is about to take place and this second coming is not of a uh, it, it is a mess it's not a messiah it's not a it's not a jesus christ but a new messiah a rough beast which is slouching uh, spinix uh, that is rousing itself from the desert and uh, lumbering towards Bethlehem to be 
born okay that is his idea that is his concept where he talks about this jaya and this falcon turning in a widening chair okay it, it goes away from the falconer until it can no longer hear its master's voice and this poem begins with a very imagery of a falcon flying out uh, flying out of earshot from its human master too far away from uh, its master to be heard and it has gotten itself lost by flying too away okay it has lost its connection with the falcon its master the falcon cannot hear the falcon the falcon can be the society the man and the man is getting for uh, father and father from the god from our god okay the falcon could no longer be heard okay by the falcon okay it has gone too far away from its master and because of this disintegration because of this uh, going astray from its uh, falcon the master things fall apart the falcon uh, in the jaya the falcon's jaya is supposed to be shrink okay it is, it should shrink as it goes towards its master but here uh, the uh, jaya is expanding okay uh, so the falcon could not hear the falcon the things are so messed up uh, because the center could not hold okay the center cannot hold mere anarchy is loosed upon the world okay the poet sees only blood bards everywhere uh, which is uh, a kind of slaughter that happened after the even during and after the world war 1 and he says only mere anarchy is let loose in the world and uh, it 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 calls the mind of uh, it, it, the poet recalls uh, the rule of satan okay or um, it can be a reference to russian revolution that happened in 1917 or fascism okay so everywhere the poet could only see blood dimmed tide okay the whole world is full of blood okay it is it's uh, the blood is not uh, drops here it is tide okay to so much of blood can be seen in the world because of this anarchy and uh, due to this process of widening of jaya man is gradually going away from christ the ceremony of innocence is drowned okay uh, it is a orgy of violence it's a ceremony okay uh, why only violence is celebrated and man has lost all his innocence innocence is drowned okay in this uh, there is no voice for innocence innocence is drowned in this tide okay tide of blood bath okay the whole world is full filled with blood and innocence is drowned in that mere anarchy the best lack all conviction all conviction conviction is unshakable belief but the best even the good people of the world okay they are uh, uh, they could not speak okay they they could not speak for or they could not keep up their goodness the best, best even the best lack all conviction uh, and while the bad okay the worst people are full of passionate intensity intensity and um, because okay the worst thing that ha- that can happen in a society in a world is where uh, or when uh, good people do not speak up when good people do not express their thoughts when good speaker good people uh, do not stand up for their moral values for uh, their policies when they do not speak up only the bad will prevail okay the worst will become full of passionate intensity where the innocence will be drowned okay so the, here only uh, we, we can only see mere anarchy in the world bloodshed in the world and uh, full of violence uh, in the world where the good people lack even the good people best people lack all conviction and the worst are full of passionate intensity when where while the good people are uh, the innocence is drowned on the other hand we can see the evil ones are full of extreme passions Uh, and they are unrestrained and unrestrainable by reason religion or morality where this is a period where people have started to ask is there a god okay they have started to uh, question religion their beliefs everything is questioned and uh, they the, they have uh, 
lost their belief in reason religion and also in morality and according to this orthodox uh, christianity they live the christians live in a expectation that after the second coming okay christ is going to come back once again as a uh, not as a, a child okay which is born in the bethlehem but as a kind of savior as an uh, as a kind of a king who is going to judge the world and he is going to come back again as a kind of a ruler and uh, christ will establish on earth a kingdom of sanctity and bliss and this the purpose of the present poem is to subvert that happy hope okay people have the happy hope when christ is going to come back again there will there won't be any sin in the world okay he will eradicate all the sin all the bad people will be punished only the good people will be rewarded and they don't have any tear or any problem or any uh, uh, hunger will be there when christ is ruling the world okay they have this happy hope happy hope of uh, the second coming of christ but this poem subverts that very hope telling that this is not this is not going to be a happy one this is going to be a very anarchic one when this rough beast is born in the bethlehem okay so this uh, second coming is not of christ but of a new messiah a rough beast which is slouching towards bethlehem to be born and the poet predicts the end of this millennium and uh, he says there will be arise uh, a, a christ opposite it's not christ it is christ opposite a savage god which is who is full of fears fierceness and violence and um, he talks about okay how okay the new civilization will be born and how will it be and let's go into the second part of the poem he says surely some revelation is at heart at hand surely the second coming is hand at hand the second coming hardly are those words out when a vast image out of spiritus mundi troubles my sight a waste of desert sand a shape with lion's body and head of a man a gaze blank and pitiless as the sun is is moving its loud thighs while all about it wind shadows of indignant desert birds the darkness droops again and now i know that 20 centuries of stony sleep were vexed to nightmare by a rocking cradle and what rough beast its heart come around at last slouches towards bethlehem to be born and in the second part you can see a kind of a ritualistic uh, chant kind of a language he says okay so he surely when he sees all these anarchy bloodshed in the world he says okay he is so sure that or she can he can foretell or forebode something that is going bad that is going to happen so he says surely second coming is at hand some revelation is at hand and that revelation is surely it it, it is a signal that uh, or war- warranty of a second coming of a new civilization and this uh, the present um, moribund condition of the civilization is a revelation of the truth that christ is coming for the second time and as soon as the poet utters the word second coming a host of images rushes uh, in front of his uh, eyes okay it is it comes out of this spiritus mundi spiritus mundi is a kind of uh, Uh, storehouse of images from your unconscious subconscious mind and it can also be jung's concept of collective unconscious primordial images the racial unconsciousness that we have okay it refers to all such things when he says utters the word okay the second coming a vast uh, image okay uh, uh, comes out a huge image comes out of uh, his spiritus collective racial uh, unconsciousness and it troubles my sight he says okay it troubles my sight uh, when he sees okay he sees a, a waste desert sand okay it's a desert sand a deserted place a waste sand maybe a desert area where he sees um shape with lion's body and head of a man okay it's a it's an image of a phoenix okay where you see um a, a body of a lion and a a uh, face of a head of a man okay he sees this stone animal uh, as phoenix in egypt 
okay maybe in egypt um, he sees that okay when he utters this uh, word the second coming a lot of images comes before his eyes and one of such images this spinnings which he sees and its gaze is blank and pitiless as the 